Hello, welcome back to Asian Cinema Season. Today I'll be talking about the movie The Morning Forest from 2007, directed by Naomi Kawase. I don't know if that's how you pronounce her name, but either way, I was very intrigued to check this movie out when it was released by the Massive Cinema. I don't know how to even approach this one, The Morning Forest. I enjoyed it very much. It's a very good film. It's about a young woman who's gone through a, a tragedy in her life and she's working at a care home for elderly people and she kind of forms a bond with one of the older residents there, this old man who is suffering through dementia and he has gone through a tragedy too. He lost his wife 33 years previous but to him it's still very raw um, and it's very heartbreaking and so they're both kind of dealing with stuff in completely different parts of their life and in completely different ways and she takes him out for the day in her car and the car basically runs off the road and so she goes to get help and he leaves the car and, and runs off into the woods so she has to go and find him and the majority of the movie is those two characters in the forest um, trying to you know well not trying to get out because he very much has a mission in mind and even if his mental faculties aren't as sharp as they used to be and he's suffering through this illness this sickness this dementia this Alzheimer's he is still driven by that morsel of information in his memory, that feeling of the love he had for his wife and his yearning to find closure and to find the spot where she was buried so that he can come full circle on his journey of grief and mourning and that's what the film is about these two characters who are both in mourning in, in again different periods of their life and I love the actor who played uh, Shigeki, the old man in fact this is a non-professional actor, this is a guy that the director knew in real life um, I think he ran a bookstore and she'd known him for years and she was interested by him and thought he could play the role and thought that because he was a guy who had a lot of spare time he was someone who could uh, come onto the film and she could really take her time in, in making it uh, her theory was that if she was to get some kind of big Tokyo actor to play the part then money would be tighter, time would be tighter and so she trusted in this person who wasn't a professional actor to come in and play the role and she took him to actual retirement homes to kind of see how people with Alzheimer's are and so I think that really helped the performance and I think that he gives a, a fantastically affecting performance uh, that feels uh, not like a performance, it feels like you're watching this person which is always I think when the best um, film characters come to life and draw you into the story when you don't really feel like you're looking at an actor and in a lot of ways I almost didn't, a lot of ways I thought maybe she found someone who had Alzheimer's because it was that convincing to me so I thought he did a a phenomenal job in the film and again it's a man who's dealing with dementia and so it's very affecting when you know he, he wants to find something but he's not quite sure where it is and she's being very um, understanding of this uh, even though that they, they shouldn't be out there and they stay out there for more than a day she is very much trying to, to wrangle him back but at the same time she's allowing him to to get to this level of um, catharsis that he is clearly seeking and they talk about very briefly in the care home because someone asks him, you know, did you, uh, you know, is, is your wife passed away? How long has it been? He says 33 years. He's like, ah, 33 years. That's the, you know, it, it, according to Buddhism, that's the year where she will, she will truly leave this existence. You know, that's kind of the, the end of that period, and it's a very specific year. And so you, you see that something is, is triggered inside him when, when that is told to him. And so he's on this mission to, to find closure after, you know, three decades. But also this woman uh, who has gone through something horrible, and they. They allude to it at the beginning of the film, and it's very sad, but I loved how, I, I just feel like it, if so many other filmmakers had done this story of a young woman and an older man, both dealing with um, family members that they'd lost, um, or, or intimate members of the family that they, that they had lost, and they're grieving, that the movie would, you know, inevitably end up with them kind of, you know, rubbing each other the wrong way and kind of getting into an arguments and now we're lost and oh, you don't know where you're going, all that kind of stuff. And then they kind of, you know, they, they start to bond slowly and they start to kind of understand each other and then they pull their hearts out and talk about their loss and then they understand that they're both going through the same thing and they bond over that loss. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. It's all implied. There's very little dialogue, you know. Um, I don't think he really understood that, she, well I, I think he did. He did understand that she was going through something but she never said it out loud. It was, there's a, there's a breakdown in the movie. There is this emotional release at one point but it's, it's never an explan explanatory one. It's never one where she tells him what's been going on. He just understands that something has cut her very deeply. And so they do form a bond but it's through 
through feeling, through through being, and they talk at the beginning of the film about what it is to be alive, to to live, and uh, and to be living. You know, if you're eating, if you're breathing, you're living. But if you if you talk to someone, if you look them in the eye, if you touch someone, you're living. You know, uh, it's about being present in a lot of ways. I, I love that idea, and it's a very calm um, and contemplative film that I really enjoyed a lot. Another thing I really liked about the Morning Forest was the location, the forest itself, and, and how it tied into their grieving process, their mourning process, that journey they took together. Um, there's something to be said, I think, for going into a forest, going into some woods, going into nature and getting back to that kind of, um, you know, that very primal um, setting, you know, where you just get back to the earth, you know, and it isn't something that's really hammered home in the film very much, but I think it is kind of um, pivotal to their their journey in the film is that just that nature that feeling of going back to the beginning in a lot of ways and going back to the earth and yeah I like that a lot and at the end of the film we get this kind of um, text that kind of describes what the mourning process is perceived to be in Japan and things like that so I mean the setting uh, is not just nice to look at but I think it's uh, it's a nice catalyst for the characters to get to the place where they both need to be. And being out there in the woods and the forest, I think, is very important to that. The final scene of the film is a very affecting one, which is all played out in this very long take, and it's a very emotional scene, but I, I didn't feel too moved by it, and I'm kind of frustrated with that. I'm not sure whether, I mean, it all depends when you watch it, it all depends what time of the day it is, what the temperature's like. I just, I wasn't fully moved by it, even though I appreciated it as the ending to this story and what it meant for the story and I thought it was a, a fantastic way to, to close the film out. I wasn't expecting it at all and it was very sweet and uh, bittersweet and melancholy you know I, I just thought it was a wonderful ending but it didn't move me as much as I feel like it should have given how emotionally charged it was. That was the only thing I could kind of you know take away from the film is that uh, for whatever reason I can't put my finger on it I wasn't as moved as I hoped that I would be given everything that was was kind of moving towards that that final scene so he was great and the young actress who plays the the young woman I thought was great too it was a very sensitive performance and uh, a vulnerable performance and yeah just nothing overplayed just believable and uh, and I really love that style which just seems to be emblematic of Japanese filmmaking is, and storytelling is this sensitive uh, sensibility which I really appreciate and it's just I'm really enjoying watching these more modern Japanese films. As I said at some point in one of these videos that, you know, there are the classics of, of Japanese cinema that you can go to like Kurosawa, etc. But I'm really liking these modern set Japanese films that are just about these very human issues um, that aren't these kind of big grand movies with fa fantastic cinematography and this big kind of, you know, like a samurai movie or something. It's just about people and how they deal with stuff. And it's done in such a naturalistic way that I get so sucked into the the stories of these people. And this is one of them. Um, it, it didn't reach that higher echelon for me, but it was a, a very good film. Definitely one to revisit. And who knows, at a later stage in my life, it might hit me harder. And I might be more moved. And I look forward to that day. So thank you for watching. Um, if you've seen the film, let me know what you think down below. It is available now from the Master Cinema Collection on Blu-ray in the UK, and uh, I highly recommend you check it out. If you if you like a film that that has that kind of contemplative pace and feel to the story, uh, you have to be patient with it. But it, it's not a film that drags for me. Um, it very much is is always moving, but always taking its time at the same time. So there we go. That's my thoughts on the Morning Forest. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you with the next one. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Apart from the fact he throws cans of Carlin into a tree. <laughs> yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, he's really cool. But he's not quite as cool as you. Cause...